Hi guys, it's me, Melissa Saliva with Beacon Valley Literacy Services. And tonight I'm on to discuss reading goals and objectives. This is the second video in a series. The last one was sight word goals and objectives. Tonight is going to be oral reading fluency. I'm gonna discuss what oral reading fluency objectives might look like for your child. So basically, you're in the right spot if your child has an individualized education plan for reading. Um, basically, I, um, IEPs help your child access the curriculum. You typically have to be diagnosed with a disability. And then your team gets together and writes goals and objectives for your child off of their testing, off of like a reading evaluation and their strengths and weaknesses. Um, the components of oral reading fluency are important to talk about before we get into the goals and objectives. Basically, oral reading fluency um, measures how well your child can read out loud, their ability to decode. So you need to consider the kinds of text. So basically, they'll have you read word lists first. They'll have your son or daughter do phrase reading and then passage reading. And each one of these would be three separate measurements. The measurements we get from oral reading fluency are rate, which is how fast you read per minute, accuracy, which is the number of words that you get right, and then the types of errors. Students can also be asked to read them cold, which means they never practiced, or a hot read, which is typically a repeated read. So sometimes we ask students to um, read the same passage over and over again to develop this oral reading fluency. So these are the components that you have to consider when thinking about what this measures and what this means for goals and objectives and what this means for your child's progress. Basically, these are sample goals and objectives. Um, usually the goal says something generic, like Melissa will improve her decoding and reading fluency. So decoding is the ability to read the word, and then the reading fluency is how I sound out loud and how well I read those words. There's two measurements that are our objectives. The first one is our oral flu uh, fluency reading rate. Basically, when I first they first measured me, I was 138 words per minute. And by the end of the year, they want me to get to 180 words per minute. So this objective is OK, but it should kind of say what type of text right here. So if it says given a text, that's too generic. You want that objective like tailored to the type of text, whether it's an instructional level text or maybe it's my grade level text. So for instance, if I'm reading, um, I'm in third grade and I'm reading at a second grade level, then um, second grade would be my instructional level text and third grade would be my grade level text. And sometimes we measure both to see the growth. You can, you can even have an objective that measured both um, instructional level reading and grade level reading, but it's not typical. Usually they say what kind of text. Um, given a text, you'll increase my oral reading accuracy. So accuracy is how many words you read correctly um, in a passage. And they want me to go from 94 to 98%. And again, this should indicate what type of text too. So if you're a parent and you get these kind of goals and objectives, they're pretty standard, except these are missing an integral piece of information, the type of text. And I think that that's what we need to look out for as parents. The benefits of teaching oral reading fluency and having a goal and objective is that it helps your child increase automaticity. So it's the way they remember like the words to their favorite song or their favorite show or their YouTube channel. Um, automaticity just helps them automatically look at the word and decode it really quickly and efficiently. The other thing that oral reading fluency does is it helps reading fluidity. That's the idea that a child can recognize the word automatically and understand it and then use the knowledge for information. Reading fluency um, helps children really show how much they've grown. It encourages them to just really tackle the decoding piece. It's the kind of practice that they need. It's the repetitiveness of reading something over and over again and really practicing those lists and words, phrases, and then passages. Teachers like to measure reading fluency because it does show great growth. It also shows us the kind of habits that kids have, like if they repeat words or they don't read to the end of a sentence or they skip a word. It also shows us the type of errors they make because kids can make errors um, 
according to semantics, which is a word that means similarly to the word. Like if I said tomorrow and um, yesterday, they're both days. It's not the best example, but it's similar. It's still a day, right? Or if they have a visual error, like if they say that for this because of the TH. So it lets a teacher really chart what kind of errors kids can make. So that's why we like to measure oral reading fluency. And that's one of the benefits of having a goal. Some of the problems with oral reading fluency goals is that it was oral reading fluency, the time that it takes for a kid to read a certain passage or a certain amount of words in one minute was designed to measure reading science. It was designed, it was like when a bunch of uh, psychologists or reading teachers got together and they wanted to do measure how good a reading program was, they would listen to the kids read and they would chart the words per minute and then they would use it to predict whether or not the child would have success in the future. So it's not the best predictor of success. I mean, it is because it showed in scientific studies, but those studies were don't done a long time ago too. And the oral reading fluency measurement alone without asking comprehension questions doesn't really help because some kids could read really fast but never stop to think about what the word means. So it's not like real reading. And sometimes a child can look like they're doing really well because reading fluency is over taught. It's not really a good measurement as to see whether or not the kids understand what they're reading unless the reading oral reading fluency passages come with questions. So there can be some downfalls to having an, an oral reading fluency goal that's not on an IEP forever. Basically, this is what the work samples will look like if your child has an oral reading fluency goal. And you should ask for work samples so you have an idea. This one on the left is a words per minute. It's multisyllabic words. So the child has to read these words. And then you could also count how many word parts your child understands. So that helps us see if they've mastered these patterns. So they get credit for word reading and then they get credit for word parts. So for instance, per term, <clears throat> they got credit for per because they might know that. The next type of work sample is this. This is a passage reading. So basically the teacher takes a timer and they read these words as fast as they can. Usually the teacher tells them a word. This means they repeated. So this kind of measure actually measures um, passage reading. So this will give you the rate and then the accuracy is when you count the number of mistakes they made over and the amount of words they actually read so this is what it looks like if you have any questions message me at beacon valley as always i thank you for joining me for this presentation drop in the chat if there's any objectives you might want me to take a look at goals and objectives can be tricky and they should change but thank you for joining me message me on beaconvalleyliteracy.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.